presentation. Schindler's List is another breakthrough. Spielberg completely renews his style as he describes himself. I took an approach of, of a documentarian. I, I, I tried to make the camera as, um, as, as much a part of the storytelling. I just created the, 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 the scene with the actors and then I would just wander into the scene like I was an eavesdropper with the camera to try to make the existence of the camera very second nature to what was happening in front of the camera. And in the process invents a cinematic way of approaching history that will follow him through his latter career. We've traced a through line of realism in Spielberg's work, surprisingly so, since what he usually applies that realism to is wild invention and fantasy. Now he finally applies it to actual history and the results are riveting. This most often manifests itself through the handheld camera, but it isn't simply a trite matter of shake the camera a bit so it looks a bit like a documentary, as if that isn't also just Hollywood artifice. Anyone can do that and say it's realism. No, it's the way the camera is performed to react to the chaos on screen. The camera is reactive to the events. It acts just as much as the actors do. That suggests a profound vision of cinematic realism that I think in some ways is original to Spielberg, or at least harkens back to the old masters. Martin Scorsese said of the old Howard Hawks film Land of the Pharaohs that it's like watching a documentary made on location 2800 years BC. Occasionally I think Spielberg has the audacity to believe that he's traveling back in time too, and the miracle is that he actually seems to achieve it. You do feel like you're there. And it's not like Spielberg sacrifices his usual facility with the staging by constraining himself to this documentarian style. It's rather that his compositions become even more deft and fluid by this stylistic renewal. This is a director whose intuitions about cinema have become so fine-tuned that he is now willing to trust to those intuitions. Ben Kingsley perfectly described the director who was Filming from your gut. Liam Neeson compared him to an abstract painter. And Rafe Fiennes says he has never experienced that level of energy and focus from a director before. The actors seem to speak of a man possessed, and you can feel that from the movie. There's an angry man behind the camera, and it's exhilarating to watch, even when the subject is as devastating as it is. It's that rage that gives the film its great dignity, a kind of dignity, which is exactly what is required if one is to dramatize or reenact this material at all. I think Spielberg understood that and used it, and that's why Schindler's List represents one of the most perfect marriages of style and substance in the history of film. A perfect marriage seems ironic in the context of Spielberg films, but there it is. Going from Schindler's List to Jurassic Park 2 feels like a bit of a joke, but that's Spielberg for you. What other director could possibly have made Jurassic Park and Schindler's List in the span of a single year? That should be enough to convince you of the uniqueness of Spielberg and the necessity of studying his work. But The Lost World basically exists for the sole reason to let a T-Rex run loose in San Diego, which is fun enough. I could have used a bit more of it, in fact. It does amp up the cynicism of the original in a way that I rather enjoy. Oh yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. And the scene with a truck hanging is hilarious, straight out of Indiana Jones. The Jurassic Park movies are basically just Indiana Jones movies set in the modern day anyway.